It's Red Eye Radio. Gary McNamara and Eric Harley talk about everything from politics to social issues and news of the day. Whether you're up late or you're just starting your day, welcome to the show from the Uniden America Studios. This is Red Eye Radio. All across America and around the planet, we are Red Eye Radio. Good morning. He's Eric Harley, and I'm Gary McNamara. That's true. <laughs> There's a headline. Mitt Romney stands down. <laughs> Will not seek presidential bid. He's sitting there after he announces he's not going to run for Senate again. Then he's sitting around just waiting for somebody to walk up. See, I mean, it says uh, Romney's chief of staff had put uh, the rumors to rest following the creation of the draft Romney Mansion Committee filing, which was open with the Federal Elections Commission. See, I thought it was Mansion Romney. Yeah, I thought it was. I don't care. Because <laughs> when they announced that, you know, that they were going to do this. I don't know, bipartisan effort to the rein in spending. I thought, you two are? Really? Yeah, that's what I really heard. I I I didn't I didn't hear that it was uh, it was going to be a Romney Mansion ticket. We knew no or even a mansion Romney ticket. I what I heard was they're both gonna work together to attempt to find the middle ground for cutting spending and we went, Good luck with that one. Well and yeah. and then then uh it was okay, mansion may run, but there was no indication that Romney would be his well, then it vice was, president. You know, Cheney, Liz Cheney, Romney. <laughs> and and we already have the do nothing party. What do they call themselves? What's what is the no goals party? What is what is it? The no goals party. No like, label party. I still like the no goals party. <laughs> the no goals whatever they're called. They they already have but, maybe hey, maybe they'll oh man, maybe they'll run under that ticket that would be hilarious but when you, when you normally say you know the the term standing down would be like uh united states and iran about to go to war iran yeah. stands down right as if there was this threat. incredible threat and in te- threat yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i wasn't th- gonna say threat was, that was even better was there a threat there was of a, him running there was a threat of him running <laughs> i mean no. i didn't feel threatened but <laughs> But there's this intensity of of the a threat. Just this war can happen, and then one side stands down. Where there was no intensity here, right? Well, in this, well, I think the headline well, exaggerates it a tad. I I, I wonder because I I took that as they were implying a threat to Trump, and that's laughable. <laughs> Trump has been indicted ninety four times. There's nothing that's a well, threat to Trump. Certainly, Romney wouldn't have been a threat to Biden. No. No. Not at all. I do love the continuing saga, the soap opera that is the whole Gavin Newsom thing. Washington Examiner had a you know oh, uh, had a piece on it yesterday. It was something to the effect of, you know, the reason. You know, it's not a problem is because he's not Newsom is not a part of the Biden team. You know, and it's it's driving liberals crazy. Newsom needs to quit pretend like he's running because he's not running. So he shouldn't do the things he's doing. You mean look all presidential and whatnot? But quite frankly, well, with that Pat Riley look yeah, from the eighties, exactly. He, he he could be he could stand courtside. If he stood up courtside, the refs would probably look at him. Going, what do you need, coach? Um, but I, it's not, it's not a threat. Biden's not. Biden isn't standing down. <laughs> well, I think I, when you went when, when you went Newsom way, I thought you're going to the San Francisco clean up San Francisco. For President Xi of, of of China, well, that, no. I, I mean, I thought that's where you're going. Well, where they actually, where they said, you know, people are asking whether it's true uh, that uh, we're cleaning up uh, San Francisco just because President Xi is coming in from China. Well, yes, we are. It's true because it's true because it's true. He actually said that, and I. That's where, and it's been the past couple of weeks where I'm thinking. Everything that comes out of their mouths is so radical 
that I'm actually getting to the point of saying, do they do a dare with each other? Look, let's see how much we can just just insult well, the citizens of the United States and tell them that we're going to do so much damn damage to their lives and see if they keep supporting us because it keeps working. The more we tell them and the more we behave in a way that hurts their lives and makes their lives harder, we get more support. Well, think about it. During a global pandemic, he tells everybody, you got to stay home. You can't take your kids outside. You can't leave your dogs inside. You can't breathe. You can't blink. No blinking allowed. And then he goes out and he's sitting at a dinner table (laughs) with a dozen other people, including doctors and zero masks. And I'm pretty sure a couple of them were sitting in someone else's lap. And they're all laughing like that meme from Goodfellas. (laughs) And I'm thinking... And then that's not it. That's not even the end of it. You're funny. Then he goes, exactly. (laughs) You mean funny, ha ha. Then he goes. Funny, ha ha. (laughs) (laughs) Then he goes to a game. Oh, yeah. Taking selfies with a man who was globally famous in part because he's one of the most famous HIV positive patients. Right. Without, and no without, mask no whatsoever. Mask. I know. I remember the football game. Magic Johnson. Yes, I remember that. It, it, I mean, it's like a contest. Not only it was like he was like, look, I, I went out in the heat of it all. I went out with doctors, and we were practically sitting in each other's laps with no mask. Watch this. I'm going to go to a game and take selfies with one of the most famous. HIV patients on the planet without a mask. When, no when, mask. When I'm telling you, you need to wear a mask even outdoors. Yes. Remember that? Yes. Remember wearing the mask outdoors in California? Remember they were talking about if you're not wearing a mask outdoors, cops will pull you over and arrest you. Right. You could only drink water one day a month. It was crazy. <laughs> I mean, it was it was insane, and 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 then the media got him cornered. Right? Well, people say you're just cleaning up because President Xi is coming to town. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> we don't give a damn about the you know what? San Francisco. And, and then he doubles down in one sentence. It's true because it's, it's true. true. We don't care about the businesses. We don't care about people that have taking their capital invested into the city. We don't give a damn about you. We care about the communist leader of the world coming in. Exactly. Now, watch this. I'm going to set this building on fire and then walk out. It's it's like some weird contest, the opposite (laughs) of virtue signaling. (laughs) How much do we hate everybody? Right. How much do we hate American citizens and how long will they continue to vote for us as we bluntly message to them, we hate you. Right. Right. Biden to his own party. We don't want the guy to run. We don't want him to be the guy. And then after last Tuesday, hey, I'm the guy. Well, you Jack. See, <laughs> you see, I mean, it's just they really are. Doubling and tripling down at, at at every turn, just crazy. You see what just he called? Uh, oh, what's his name? Who said he shouldn't run last week? He's David Axelrod. Oh, Axelrod, yeah. He called him the uh, the p word. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> just, I mean, serious. <laughs> and who was it in the media oh, last God. week that made the comparison, saying, you know, Axelrod is the Obama crowd, you know? Yeah. And that's kind of the rift right now. One of the rifts. The other one is the Newsom crowd. And I'm thinking, by the way, when the story hit yesterday on the, you know, cleaning up the streets in San Francisco with President Xi, I said, look, Newsom believes he's hosting the Chinese president, <laughs> not Biden. Biden is not even a point. In fact, at one point, when in the story I was reading was that for the upcoming meeting between Biden and President G, and I, I said, "Oh yeah, Biden's gonna be there." 
Because the whole thing, I mean, you, you look at it, it's, and the left is saying this too. Democrats are saying this. Newsom is behaving like someone who's running. Newsom is behaving like he's already the nominee. And I love it. I, I didn't, I I didn't understand it. the headline at first when I saw it. It took me like a second or so, and I went, oh, mm. I get it. Mm. And it was Babylon B. Newsom assures homeless they can resume pooping on the sidewalks once his boss leaves. Yeah. I went, his boss. Oh, yeah. President G. President G. Oh, his yeah, communist yeah. boss. Right, oh, exactly. Okay, all right. I get it yeah. now. That, yeah, exactly. That's but you think about it. I mean, it's, it's like there is no self-awareness. Uh, there's no self-awareness whatsoever because they don't feel there's any need for self-awareness, that they can sit there. Newsom believed at that moment he could, without question, insult the people of San Francisco, insult the people of California, California. and and just say, yeah, we don't give a damn about you. We're doing this, so we look good for the the communist president of China. Right. We don't care about you. We don't care if you're... If you've invested all your capital in a business here and trying to succeed and you can't succeed, we don't care if you're a small business person, uh, you know, who's, you know, whose restaurant had to close. Right. We don't care about you. We care about impressing the communist Chinese president. Right. And he admits it bluntly. They're even going to allow police officers to arrest people who have broken the law. (laughs) No, they're not going to go that far. Oh, okay. O- Sorry, o- only near, only around the motorcade. Yeah. Sorry, we engage in hyperbole like a trillion times a day. <laughs> it's it really is insane. It really is insane. I like this one. This would be a good deal here. The Babylon Bee. I'm like, this would actually be a good marketing thing. Mm-hmm. Thousands already lined up for Black Friday after grocery store offers prices. From when Trump was president. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, wow, that's saw actually that. that was actually pretty good. I saw that. Yeah. Like, that's actually that's that's a, a, yeah, that's a great headline. I like and I'm it. thinking, wow, that could be a radio station promotion. Oh man, are you kidding me? One day that could only? be a talk radio station yeah. promotion. Oh my gosh, remember the gas things that they would do? Okay, gas for whatever. Yeah, you know, your yeah to yeah. match the frequency of the station or I think, something. I or think whatever. we did that once. We did. Yeah. yeah, we did that. I remember, I remember yeah. doing that one time. Yeah. Uh, At our, our flagship, flagship WBAP. Yeah, but the problem was we ramped up the price to $8.20 a gallon. <laughs> I, it could have been poor planning. Um, that was the poor planning for the <laughs> don't you wish you lived in California yeah. promotion well, that, that didn't work out as well as they it's, had It's also it. the day that they, the day, the one day they made me promotions director. So. <laughs> And that was, by the way, that's an untrue story. Yeah, it somebody's didn't happen. So, somebody's going to hear that. Somebody in management's going to hear that. You know? <laughs> yeah, and so they go. Were you guys saying that we held a promotion where we sold gasoline no. for eight dollars a gallon? No, <laughs> no, it's a joke. It's a joke. You know, it's interesting. I was thinking about uh, going back to the the uh, the Biden and G meeting, and you know, say, why San Francisco? Why? And I realized, oh, because there's a ton. Of office space available, <laughs> a ton. They'll have the run of the place. Oh man! Just pick a boardroom. Yeah. Um, wow. It will. You know what will be interesting is is how the, these dynamics come to play. Uh, by the way, today October inflation numbers. And I was looking at them earlier. Oh, what were they looking to be at? The median forecast uh, is. Uh, for core CPI month over month, 0.2. Last month it was 0.3. Uh, CPI year over year, 3.2. It was 3.7, I'm uh, 3.3. Um, it was 3.7 last month. And core CPI year over year, this is what's interesting. Core CPI year over year, the median forecast is 4.1. And that's where it was last month. And the median forecast has not been uh, accurate on on the core CPI numbers. So we'll see. Uh, but that's coming out uh, later this morning. When is that? Uh, 8.30 Eastern. So here, uh, 
later this morning, and we'll see where they land. But, of course, if you guys, what everybody's watching. Now, on month over month inflation, uh, CPI, 0.1 is the median forecast. Yeah, you're doing the same thing, too. You've got that what look on your face. It was 0.4 the month before. Again, this is month over month. CPI, 0.1. Uh, is that because gas prices came down? Could be. It has to be because gas prices yeah. came down. But I'd love to see yeah, also. That's gas prices coming down. Yeah, yeah I would love to see, too, um, you know, where the consumer is. I mean, we saw the the um, uh, the GDP numbers driven by consumer activity. But then you also look at the uh, the producer price index, which comes out tomorrow, PPI, what they call it. And that's an indicator as to more of a long-term forecast. And we'll see where those numbers come out. I don't think there's a median forecast for everything just yet. But CPI numbers, inflation numbers for October later this morning. 866-90, Red Eye. This morning's USDA Farm Report is brought to you by Howes Products. Tested, trusted, guaranteed since 1920. It was an extraordinary opportunity for us to make sure that people living in rural and remote areas have access to the health care, the dental care, and the mental health care that they need. Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack in Seattle Monday focusing in on dental health because he was visiting the University of Washington School of Dentistry to announce a $1 million USDA grant to bolster its dual-purpose program of bringing more dental services to more rural and remote areas. We see the expansion of this program potentially being able to help up nearly 90,000 additional residents uh, access important dental care. Partially delivered by young dental students, the program's other purpose... Encouraging a lot of young people who wish to be dentists uh, to consider a career in a rural area. It's often very difficult to persuade young dental students to take up practice in rural areas. Gary Crawford for the U.S. Department of Agriculture. This report brought to you by Cenex Fuels and Lubes. We'll be right back with more Red Eye Radio with Eric Harley and Gary McNamara. It's Friday Radio. He's Eric Carney, and I'm Gary McNamara. You know, I, I started thinking yesterday the response, whether it was uh, from uh, Biden yesterday, who was mumbling through uh, about uh, the uh, the hospital where we know that Hamas has command and control centers underneath yeah. and uh, actually shooting out the windows. And uh, and I'm sitting there thinking to myself, wow, I mean, this whole thing, Babylon B hit it right where they had this headline, Cain calls for ceasefire after killing Abel. And I just I, you you see it and you laugh because of the 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 irony of what's going on. And yesterday, I think, was the the perfect example of all of the left out there, all of the left mm-hmm. saying Israel needs to protect the hospital. Israel needs to protect the hospital. I didn't hear one word from any Democrat promoting that who said Hamas needs to move away from the hospital. Did you hear? Have you heard nope. anybody say that? No, none. No. I mean, it's so obvious what's going on. Any idiot can figure it out. But I'm sure what you'd get from these pro-beheading baby folks out there, that side of the 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 issue, look, there are good people on both sides, Eric. Um, exactly. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Uh, that, that uh, you know, you, you think that you would, you would hear some, from somebody saying, my God, but you don't. You don't hear any of it. It's like, as if Hamas doesn't even exist in the equation. It's Israel and it's the innocent civilians who they wish to kill. Yeah. Mind boggling. It is. Listening to Red Eye Radio from the Uniden America Studios. 
And he's Eric Carley, and I'm Gary McNamara. Uh, we hear anything from the White House yet? On uh, Now, I know the subpoenas for the classified documents, the White House hasn't responded yet. Uh, what about the subpoenas for Hunter Biden, James Biden, uh, one of the business associates, I can't think of his name, uh, Walker, was it? Mm. Yeah, I haven't um, heard any any of the I haven't responses any, yet. I haven't heard anything on that, but uh, the uh, TIP uh, Insights polling here did another poll, and they've, they've been looking at their polls from the last few months. Half of Democrats want Biden gone if inquiries show influence peddling with China or others. Pushed to the back pages by more pressing news, in particular the October 7th terrorist attacks against Israel, allegations of corruption against President Joe Biden and his family have been relegated to the bottom of the news scroll, but it's still very much of an issue to American voters, the latest tip poll shows. The INI tip poll first broached the topic in July Mm. when voters were asked what should be done if charges that the Biden family had taken more than $30 million in payments from overseas governments and corporations proved true. The poll then began tracking responses uh, in August. As the data shows, little has changed. If anything, uh, voters have congealed somewhat as potentially damaging revelations continue to dribble out from ongoing congressional investigations into the Biden's family finances. In this month's online national poll taken November 1st through the 3rd among 1,400 registered voters, 65% agreed that if evidence showed Biden was taking bribes from foreign sources, he should be, if he should, uh, he should either resign or be impeached. That includes 49% of Democrats, 84% of Republicans, and 64% of independents. Hmm. Apart from impeachment or quitting, three other responses were offered that Biden would be allowed to finish out his term but not run again which was supported by 15% of those responding, or that Biden should be allowed to finish his term and run again in 2024, which found 10% support and not sure 11% uh, showed. As noted, responses have been consistent throughout. The combined impeach resign option garnered 67% in August when many of the charges of financial misconduct were still fresh. Since then, the combined response has remained At 65% for September, October, and November, a strong statistical consensus. Now, what what do they consider a bribe? Because on one, it says here, half of Democrats want Biden gone if inquiries show influence peddling with China. The other one says bribes. Now, you can have influence peddling and bribes, or you could just have influence peddling, or you could have the appearance of influence peddling where the entire family, I need to put this in there, right? Where the entire family was involved in a scheme to use Joe Biden and rip off people by saying, rip off foreign actors by saying, Joe will do these things for you. They were taking advantage of him. And well, the only thing is he was making money on it too. Does he get a pass if basically it was Hunter Biden and the Biden family selling influence that Joe knew about but never delivered upon? Well, if they yeah, because they have to separate that. The question would be if they can only prove the selling of influence. Are you okay with that? And it. The reason I say that, the reason I ask it that way, is because I believe a great number of people are. And the way they excuse it away is, well, they all sell influence in some way or another and blah, 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 blah. Bribe's very clear. I give you money, you give me favor. You do this in exchange for this amount of money. Quid pro quo. That's very clear. But if they're saying, no, my standard is here. 
And I'm okay with everything unless you can prove a bribe, a quid pro quo. Well, remember, because the question was asked in the bribe, if Biden took bribes and half right. of Democrats believe that's okay. Right. Well, no, that's that's a great point. That's what I was saying. I, I know there are far too many people that are okay with it. Well, they're all, they all do something and they all blah, blah, blah. Doesn't matter. The agenda rules and we need whoever's going to be in there because what I would wonder is how many of them also believe that if it's proven of those that are okay with the bribe, that if it's proven, they know it falls on the party, too, because they know that others in the party, anybody who was in office at that time, in any office inside the Beltway, is guilty by association because they knew and they did nothing. Here's what I wonder. What is what is the plan from Republicans? Because as we know, the depositions for Hunter J- James and was it Rob Walker? Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah. And and then the the rest were were voluntary requests, which then may become subpoenas. Mm. But these subpoenas are for them to be deposed, mm-hmm. not to testify publicly. Right. Now, you know, I would assume they would want that to happen sometime next year. How do you do that? Hmm. I mean, will they go to the impeachment process? Because I've always believed the Republicans most likely didn't want to go to impeachment because they don't want it to backfire on them if he's not impeached. Well, and 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 remove from office, impeach and remove from office. Right. My thought process has been behind the scenes. What they want is to to take this because now you're going to be They'll depose them and they'll depose them. How how long? I mean, how long will this take till January? Will they be done? I mean, they're gone next week. Then nobody has from what we know, nobody's responded to the subpoenas yet. We haven't heard anything. Then you're into the Christmas season. Yeah, no, I and, think that I think and, they that going well into next year. Yeah, and so is that the entire plan is just to stretch this thing out, deposition, and then you call for them to testify. And if they don't, uh, you know, if they if if they don't, then you subpoena them to testify, and you want them number one to give the deposition, right? And then if you like what you get from the deposition, then you eventually you would want them to testify publicly and so you'd subpoena them for a live appearance in front now if they call the fifth they call the fifth Mm -hmm. but you bring them before i would think that you would want to bring them before the public to have them testify publicly yeah because the whole goal is to if you believe it leads to joe Mm -hmm. if you believe Excuse me. They believe it goes to Joe. If you believe you have the electronic evidence that it leads to Joe irrefutable. Okay. Yeah. Because the whole point is not to impeach. It might be to force him out of office, but at the minimum, it's to damage him over the next year. Yeah. Yeah. And so you stretch it out. So I don't see, I mean, the depositions... They, are they going to happen in December? They happen in January. Does one happen in December? Another in January? Another in February? You can stretch this thing out for the longest time, if you wish to, and then have hearings on it. The impeachment inquiry is still going on. We want all these people now to testify in front of the entire Congress. Well, and so it, you call them yeah. next summer yeah. to testify because you want the maximum damage. Mm-hmm. Now. If if Biden said, I'm not running again, do you still do it and waste your time on it? Or do you go after who, you know, the new the new candidate is? Is it worth it at that point to continue? Or will it be viewed as a public? He's not running again. He's done. He's an old man. Leave him alone. And does it also take away from the 
weaponization of the DOJ against Donald Trump and, and all that. That could be political leverage from Donald Trump. And what does he have to say about that? And I, it, it's here's what I would wonder. If they got to a point, and this is a huge if, if they got to the point of actually demonstrating clearly a quid pro quo, proving it. We've been saying up till now, even his own party. If we're talking bribery and you've got it, his own party. They've got to vote. If they go to impeachment, they've got to vote. But how many of them say, no, we don't believe the proof or we don't, you know, it's a hoax or how many of them would stand the line, hold the line? How many would not vote for impeachment on the left? And I don't know that. It's it is so bizarre right now. Because it really depends on what you think you can get away with based on what the polls show. And if you've got, what would you say, roughly a half of Democrats, if you can prove a quid pro quo, if you can prove bribe, they're okay with it, Mm -hmm. then that's the political support you need. And that's where their representatives go, nope. We don't buy the evidence. We don't whatever excuse. And they don't vote for him because up until now, we've been saying, look, if you can prove a bribe, then you're going to get his own. Yeah, but if if you have half of Democrats, that means you have 70 percent of independents and 84 percent of Republicans. It's true. You have enough public pressure. That's true for you to lose. But I'm just wondering where because it takes a. I mean, on removal. You're going to need a hefty vote. Here's the the thing, though. There's a difference between saying if. You know, if they prove it, there's a Mm -hmm. difference in responses. If you say if and we have the evidence here, here's the bribe. No, that's true. If if it's proven, then there could be great reconsideration by those individuals who say they're okay with it now. Right. Because, well, you're just talking speculation here. Abstract versus reality. And if the reality is very clear and it's all over the liberal media, which is, of course, exactly where it would be and they consume that, then it could change things drastically. I would hope, I would hope that would be the case. Now, if Biden, if they do prove that he takes a bribe, can he take the Uncle Leo defense in Seinfeld oh, when, I, I when Uncle all, Leo was was uh, was stealing shoplifting if, books from if the bookstore? I'm his, if I'm his lawyer, I'm going to buy him the robe. Yeah. Do the, uncle, the whole Uncle Leo defense. I'm an old man. I didn't I'm, know. I'm, I had no yeah, idea. Well, no, I'm going to buy him. Money, the, I'm going to buy stealing. him the robe so he can just walk around on the White House lawn incoherently. Wait a minute. He's already doing that without the robe. I, I guarantee you, they'll try something. Eight six six ninety red eye. Coming up, more with Gary McNamara and Eric Harley. It's Red Eye Radio. It's Friday Radio. He's our Carly, and I'm Gary McNamara. We'll leave this till tomorrow, but interesting new survey that was done. Yeah. Actually, a study, not a survey. A study All right. Was done All right. All right. That pets don't make you happier. Yeah. Told you. And you know the first thing that came to my mind? You're getting rid of your great white shark? No. Oh. Number one, that's false. But number two, hmm. in the back of my mind, it's like, this has to be the first liberal attempt because of climate change to get people more comfortable to convince them that <laughs> they actually their pet doesn't make them happy therefore they doesn't they don't need a pet because remember the problem with pets and climate change oh yeah 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 we would have a much we they would have a much cleaner environment without our pets yeah they don't add to your life at all so <laughs> exactly. You don't need right, that. Right. It's only killing the planet. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Right, <laughs> right. Sarah McLaughlin is out of work. <laughs> it's over. It's over. It's the beginning of the end. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> We don't have to worry about the whole rescue system anymore. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's right. Well, it's like, who was it? I think it was Bill Burr talking about rescuing an, rescuing an animal. Mm-hmm. Just, don't say rescue. I adopted it. The rescue. What, did you get it out of a burning building? You didn't rescue the dog. Now, I you did. adopted it. I did rescue my first cat. Yeah, well. And you were all witnesses. Yeah, well, you took it home. Yes. It might have had a great life right here outside the studios. (laughs) You don't know. Might have preferred that. I kidnapped the cat. (laughs) This is Red Eye Radio on Westwood One.